Shalom, everyone. Um, we're glad to be back uh, here for the Cave Podcast. Do we even remember what episode it is? It's been so long. Four? Episode four. four. Episode four. Um, and what's the title of this episode, gentlemen? Sexual self-control. How to practice sexual self-control. Good. All right. Um, before we get into it, um, I guess it's good for us to let everyone know where we've been and why we've been off the air for two months. Um, we had an issue here with our plumbing and um, a serious plumbing issue, uh, almost $20,000 worth of plumbing. And um, thank you to all of you who donate to the Cave of Adullam. Um, and, the, you know, the, the union is our nonprofit, but the Cave of Adullam falls under its umbrella. But thank you to everyone who donated because it was your donations that helped us get this done. And if you still would like to donate, um, to the Cave of Adullam, you can visit our website, um, thekata.org, that's T-H-E-C-A-T-T-A dot org, and then just click give a donation. And we truly appreciate it. Help us not only when we have emergencies like, like the plumbing one. issue like this one, but also help kids with uh, counseling when we have to pay therapists, uh field trips, everything, you know. So thank you again for that. But we're back here, and um, and we're excited to be back and to talk about this topic that seems to be avoided by so many uh, males. Would you say the same? Yes. yes. All right, good. Um, sexual self-control, uh, which is what we want to talk about today. Um, do you guys have the definition do you guys remember it? Yes. Sexual self-control is the ability to control one's erotic desires to avoid committing sexual sins such as pornography, masturbation, or adultery. Mm, good. So I have the power to control one's sexual desires and erotic emotions, especially in tempting situations. Um, for instance, if you're with a girl, you know, and someone you're not married to and you what would they call it Netflix and chill. Yeah. Okay. You're in one of those situations where you know you shouldn't be in right as men are the most high. Right. Now we in the world, anything goes, that's an easy path to walk. It's broad. You can do anything. Um, so everyone who's listening or watching, we're coming from the perspective of being young men, boys or men of the most high. All right. Uh, Cause when I was in the world, there was no rules. You know, just, you know, be promiscuous, have fun, enjoy it. If you get STD, get a shot or whatever, you know, and that was it. But when I surrendered my life to the Most High through Yeshua or Christ, uh, I had to uphold a standard of righteous living. And when I failed, which I did many times early in my walk, um, I repented. Um, Proverbs 5, chapter 5, verse Verses 15 and through 18. And this is Solomon uh, talking to his sons. And what's interesting, here's a man who lost the kingdom because of his sexual sins. And that's what's deep. So he's advising them saying, hey, my sons, drink water from your own well. Share your love only with your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone? Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. And so just quick context. Uh, what Solomon is saying, spilling the water of your springs in the streets. What do you think that means? Your seed. Your seed. What is your seed? Like Se like apples, semen. apple seed or no. uh, you're, you're what? semen. Your semen. So we learn from the things that people do good. And we also learn from their mistakes. You got it? Yes. So Solomon, because of his lust for women of many nations, the kingdom was taken from him, all right, with David's lineage pretty much, all right? And so um, how often you'll see men who are promiscuous or irresponsible have sex with women who can take their wealth? You know, they can lose everything. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, so why are you just having sex with anyone? Why do you think we as men, young men, 
are so quick just to have sex with anyone just because they have a a physique or just we just arouse. Why why do you think that is? Because society it's like as you're raised. First off, as you're raised, you're like pretty much raised into a sexual culture. You. I, a lot of people are get into pornography at elementary school, middle school. I was introduced to pornography in elementary school. So sexual promiscuity and just being, just sex is um, popularized mm. and driven. It's almost like, it's like systematic in a way. It's just mm. there. Mm. Do you think it's like a declaration of being a man that you are promiscuous? Yes. All right. What about you, Jay? What you think? Um, what Elisha said was good. I'm just going to go off him. You know, with people getting introduced to that at such a young age, it's around and that's what people talk about a lot. And that's going with lust, going with looking at women the wrong way. And it's just like it'll draw you into it. And they'll say stuff like, oh, Jay, you see how she look or Jay, like you want to go slide on that or Mm -hmm. like anything like that. And it, it can be like just like that. And you'll snap and like break Mm. Yeah, being in middle school, we used to middle school. I know a lot of my friends and people I knew would like just lie about uh, losing their virginity, mm. etc. Because that's just how popularized it was. If you lost your virginity in middle school, you was the man. Yeah, mm. it was wild. And that's that's deep. You say that because <laughs> I remember one time, man, uh, I was in Florida with my cousin Kevin, and uh, he took me over this his girlfriend house. She had a younger sister who was attractive, but I think I was. I can't remember my age. I actually wrote about it. I think I was like 13, 14 years old at the time. And I I didn't want to have sex. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable kissing her. And when we got back in the car riding back home, he was like, man, you ain't even kiss her. <laughs> I'm like, no, I mean, I, I just met her. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so soon as we walked through the door, so imagine your entire family there. Because, like, you know, we my family was in Florida. I'm from Detroit. So all of them gathered just to be around us. So imagine all your uncles, cousins, uh, both women and men in there, and your mom. And Kev said, hey, did y'all know Jason was still a virgin? And the whole room horse laughed at me. Even my mom, I looked at her, she started laughing. I'm like, yo, you know, and so... When I got back to Detroit, I was on a mission to lose my virginity. And like you're saying, Elisha, it is, it's become a part of the fabric of what society calls or labels a man. But then we wonder, you know, uh, about, you know, especially in the work that I'm in, you know, we're trying to decrease what they call like fatherless homes, where the father isn't like married to the mother of the children and or isn't actively involved. And one of the main reasons we have this issue is because of a lack of sexual self-control. And so you being young, you know, what can be done? You know, you guys have notes here. I would love to hear more from your side. What can be done to counter this, um, this type of thinking that men, we have been programmed to believe, uh, the role of women, and more so the role of us as men. Well, um, me and Elisha came up with our notes, came up with five steps to practice self, sexual self-control. The first step is, of course, to connect with God. Um, God's the main source of healing. He's always there for you. Um, he'll convict you. If you're, if you're one with God, he'll convict you when you're wrong. That's the major part of, you know, getting better with sexual Mm self-control. Step two is connecting with people that have, I don't know the word, but escapes. um, More so have gotten over the sexual urge to, like, have sex or any type of um, masturbation or pornography. Someone that you can trust that's older or... Just a leader in your life, like an uncle or just your father, like a brother to you, you know. And and I want to just chime in with the scripture, Second um, Timothy, chapter two, verse twenty-two. It says, "Flee or run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, like what you're saying, Jay, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. 
enjoy the companionship of those who call on Yahuwah or the Most High from, with pure hearts. So again, you know, we also know that the scriptures also teach us that bad company corrupts what good, good morals. morals good morals and so i i, I like that go ahead you have another one or that uh we have three more elisha you can get some of them the third says stay away from things that provoke erotic emotions say, say that again slower. stay away from things that provoke erotic emotions give me an example give so us an example. example is if you so number one is if you follow a whole bunch of instagram models on instagram mm -hmm. and then you expect to stay away from pornography that's absurd Right. It's, that's going to provoke an erotic emotion. Mm -hmm. It's better to strategize or plan your life out in a way that you can stay away from those things. And then when the need comes, that's when your actual self-control is. Self-control is short-term versus strategy long-term. Right. So that's important because it's like you can't constantly try to fight everything off. It says flee from sexual uh, sin. The fourth is set boundaries for the things that you can't run away from. So there's some things that like are all always going to come. Instagram, if you're on social media, you're going to have some sort of sexual content pop up somehow. Mm -hmm. And the best thing you can do is limit the, the chances of that happening. Right. One of those ways is unfollowing certain people mm -hmm. on social media. Mm -hmm. um, or another way is that if you know that you have a, a app or something that you go to that is almost... Almost nothing but for lustful content, sexual content, just delete it because there's no point in you being on the app. Most people don't use Twitter, f and they only use Twitter for one reason. Right. So just delete certain apps like that. Um, real quick, even for, for us as men, actually for all of y'all, you know, so you'll, you'll go on Instagram uh, or TikTok or, you know, you'll see like the, the feed for reels, okay? Yes. And, of course, women pop up if you're a man. Right. So they want to test you. And I first realized that with TikTok, you can go to the video and click not interested. Right. And then you shouldn't, you do it a couple of times, you shouldn't see women on your feed anymore. Yes. And so that's one thing, you know, I did as a uh, husband and a man of the most high to help me not look at those videos because they come up. And then if you're not strong enough, you're going to look. Hey, I don't care if you're strong. I know men who are strong. You'll click on it. But you you try to be done with it at that after that. But why even open that door? And that's what you guys are saying, which is good. The fifth is change your response to erotic emotions. So erotic, uh, this, this is going to be a long explanation, but basically um, you can respond to different emotions. The, you've trained your brain to respond to lust to go watch porn. You've trained it to go watch masturbation. That's right. like a trigger. Oh, I, I'm bricked up. Let's go. Let's go. Jack you off. say you bricked up. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yes, what that's, that's what you say. So the idea is to wow. change the response because then your brain will look at this. It'll say, okay, this is a problem. And instead of looking at porn as the solution, it will do, it will look at something else as a solution. One of the things I learned is that doing push-ups actually does help that because it kind of takes your brain away from that feeling. I don't know the exact scientific reasoning. Push-ups help you. I, I don't, yes. They ain't help me. Help they don't help you? No, I didn't help. What you're saying, it helps you stop what, lusting? Is that what you're saying? No, or? lusting. But, like, example, if you're just chilling and you're in a random position, I, like, just randomly, it just pops up. Usually, if you just take your mind, it's the fact that when you're When you bored. say it pops up, what do you mean? Social like media? Some on social media? Or? Randomly, you just start getting that, that erotic feeling. You bricked up, like yes. you said. All right. Then it's like. So you're just doing, it's basically you're diverting that the energy. Uh, the, the yeah, energy. I got you. Okay, well. I guess so. If you uh, have an erection, or you you guys say bricked up, and you go cut the grass, I'm pretty sure you'll forget. <laughs> you're gonna forget. I guess about you it know. Sure. Yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying. So it, okay, it, it's all about like what's available to you and what you can do. I got it's, you. It, it's all it's all subjective. Well, right. you can go wash the dishes, and, yeah. and for most men, that definitely will definitely uh, decrease the erection or whatever, right? Or yeah. do chores, cleaning the house. I get it. Okay, go ahead. All right, any more? Mm, no, but. Regarding that last one, if you change your, it could simply be as leaving the area that you're in. Right. Your brain will link um, certain feelings to certain areas. So if you're usually in your bedroom when you do it, you should leave your bedroom when you get that feeling. I had a question. Uh, can you guys name a time uh, when you were pressured into doing something sexually um, that you shouldn't have? I haven't. I didn't do it. I didn't actually do it. 
But um, it was this. I didn't actually. I don't think it was me literally directly being pressured into doing something I shouldn't have. It was being pressured into doing something that would probably lead to something else that I shouldn't have. So it was this girl, and she was living a lifestyle that I wasn't trying to live. She was living a very, she was living a crazy lifestyle. She smoked weed. She, she drugs, part, a party lifestyle. I already knew she was active. How old were you? I was, it was recent. I was like, fifth, I'm still 15, but it was like last year. Okay. 15. All right. And. I was talking, I wasn't talking to her, but it was, she's very attractive. So I was so, oh, bro, she's on you. Go talk to her. Go talk to her, et cetera. I'm like, but I already know what type of time is she's on. Why would I, why would I talk to her? Mm-hmm. And I ended up, I would talk to her, but I would back up. It was never actually committed to a point where I would trap myself in such a situation like that. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was something that I was pressured to do. And I, at the end of the day, I didn't do it, but yeah. What about you, Jay? Nothing really for me. Really? Yeah. I don't want to bust on you. I can name one. <laughs> huh? I don't want to uh, you know, expose you, but yeah, you got something. I can name one. Oh. I don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were like going on that one. What I, you mean? I didn't know we were talking about like that level. You know? I thought I thought we were talking about like having actual, you know. Basically doing something that you shouldn't do that's sexual. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have, but no. You don't want to talk about uh-huh. it? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm trying to find this scripture. Because uh, Solomon talks about several times uh, her house. Uh, talks about. It's Proverbs 6 or 7. Right? You sure? Yeah, it has to be because that was one of the five, six, or seven is what we teach from. Uh, here we go. All right. Um, yeah, here it is. It's, I like. Uh, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27, basically oh, yeah. lines up with you when is. Solomon says to avoid the prostitute or the promiscuous woman. Her house is a highway to the grave leading down to the chambers of death. Yeah. And so I, I like what you did. You avoid, you saw this, her behavior told you like, mm, if I get involved with her, 9 times 10, I'm going to. Doing Become one, shit, doing something you shouldn't do. You're going to be with her more. Mm-hmm. She already has some influence over you for you to basically, you know, put aside your morals or what you believe your character or what you stand for to go do that. So you can't, you're vulnerable already. Yes. And so being around her could definitely lead you down a path of destruction. So uh, again, brothers, that if you like to talk to your sons about that one, this is for the fathers. It's Proverbs. Chapter 7, verse 27. Again, you can read Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, uh, where you can hear Solomon, a father, advising his sons on uh, sexual morality. Again, this is a man, a king who made major mistakes due to his lack of sexual self-control. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Yeah. We talked about culture and its influence, right? Yes. What is the greatest influence in today's culture that promotes the mistreatment of women probably, and girls? Probably hip hop. You say hip hop music? Yes, probably hip hop. Why do you say that? Is first off, it's number one music platform in the world right now, mm-hmm. right? Everybody's listening to hip hop. So that's a, already some that's respected. So whatever they say is something that is automatically going to be respected or is going to have influence over the world. Mm-hmm. And the type of lyrics that they put in there regarding sexually, domestic violence, et cetera, it is going to have influence no matter what because of the position that they're in. So they're definitely the biggest influence. Mm. What about you, Jay? What you think? I got to agree with Elisha. Um, what comes out of your mouth usually is what you do. It's what you are. Like if you say negative stuff, it's going to get to your head and it's going to program yourself to act like that because like I've experienced that myself. I've seen my friends go through it and like just seeing it with him, you can realize why he did it and like why, why it happened. Mm, I know in the scriptures, Proverbs, it also says that the, uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. All right. And so we definitely have to be careful of what we say about others and ourselves and uh, it can definitely be internalized. 
my mother was abused. She was beaten by her first husband. So how do you think she would feel hearing that men, boys, are calling an A-shirt or a tank top a wife beater? You see how we, you know, we view our women? You know, it's like they're, it's called objectification, where we view them as objects, not equals. We don't even value their superior qualities. Not all of us as men. And so as a result, they're treated like property. And yes, uh, hip hop promotes that, but we can't just blame, you know, hip hop. You know, it's it's the way we view women, the way, uh, again, we look at them only for pleasure instead of what they can, what they were created to do. Or B. They're not sex objects. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. But we got them in the videos and then men would say, well, it's not like I'm forcing them to shake their butts in these videos or twerk. But at the end of the day, it's not like we're saying, hey, my sister, don't do that. Put some clothes on. We can still make money. So no one is stopping them as well. And so it's, it's two sides. We can't just blame men for that, and we just can't blame women. We both have to work together to resolve um, the way our women are mistreated. I even say in my book, Battle Cry, I tell about a story of a, a, a young, we all were young at the time. I was in Atlanta pursuing my music dreams and uh, staying with a friend of mine who became very influential in the music industry. And... Um, They decided, him and his boys, they were going to have a gentleman's party where they would pay for these strippers, the best strippers in Atlanta to come by the house, and and you pay enough money, you can have sex with them. And so that's what was going on. I I decided to stay in my room. Um, I never, even before I surrendered my life to the Most High, I never was the type of guy who would, you know, have sex with a woman and my boy next to me naked and he having sex with it. I just, that stuff just didn't set well with me, never. And so I stayed in my room to make beats. Um, and I remember um, one of the strippers came in my room and I wrote about it. I want to read this. I said, as I was finishing up a song, one of the strippers knocked on my door and asked if I wanted her to dance for me. I was not interested. My disinterest perplexed her because she was very attractive and well-known in the Atlanta area. Without permission to stay, she sat on my bed and stared at the wall. Within minutes, she started sharing her heart with me and how her initial plan was to dance until she could make enough money to start her own business. And like what you said, Elisha, about if you would have gotten a relationship with that girl, it could have taken you down other paths that you you hadn't intended on walking down, right? So here it is. You know, she has a plan. Let me just strip. She didn't say have sex with a lot of men. She says, let me just dance and strip, make this money so I can probably buy my first property and buy another one and then get out of this. And then she said, um, unfortunately, I said, unfortunately, money lures many away from the light. And she was misguided, lost in the dark arts. I gave her a few ideas of how to create an exit strategy from the strip club. She wanted to stay in touch with me. So, Jay, here it is. I started dating your mom, and here's a very attractive woman who wanted to stay in touch with me. And I said no um, because, you know, I was dating your mom, and I knew what the scriptures had taught, even though, because God had been calling me, even though I wasn't really sold out then, I knew what it talked about avoiding the very appearance of sin. She respected my conviction, and because of our conversation, she decided to leave the party early. And I say in here, I share this story. Regardless of the choices we make, women are not created to be treated as sex objects. We are supposed to view them as our future wives, not less than, but equal partners. So the next time you encounter a misguided woman, I pray you will see a wounded soul instead of someone you can manipulate and control. Something I, I was thinking about this topic specifically, and something I noticed was that the reason most men aren't willing, those get to that position where they can have a woman they want, 
most reason the main reason that they don't um abstain from that is because everybody else at the top are doing the same thing, but specifically those at the bottom aren't doing that. Okay, so the perception of your culture is that young men your age who do not manipulate women only do not only don't do it because they can't do it. Yes. This was this may I start to see more things like that on TikTok. They be like, you only say you're saving yourself for marriage because you're you yeah, can't get yeah, nothing yeah, right yeah. now. I got I'm it. like, Damn. I got it. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, okay, so again, so who in your schools are counter that thinking or counter that culture? You don't see my, a lot of people like that. Uh, is there anyone in your schools who is like that? This counter that culture? No. All right, not even you two yet. Oh, of course I am. You sure? You didn't, you said nobody. Yeah, well, because I'm thinking of everybody else. Okay. I'm, I'm like that, yes. All right, Jason, what about you? I don't know, because what Elisha said is, like, so true. Okay, do you like, I mean, do you, if you see it, you speak up against it? I don't want to be, like, per se, disliked, even though mm-hmm. like, I'm already kind of popular in the school period. But it's like, being against something so popular is kind of hard. That's real talk. Um, I got a, I got a story. It's interesting you bring that up. Uh, when I was getting ready the day before marrying your mother, um, when you guys hear like bachelor parties, do you think of Bible studies? What do you think of when you when men <laughs> <No>. say, <laughs> "What is a bachelor party like typically for they men?" Go out partying. Go out partying, and are they partying with you know at dog shows or nah. what's what's what usually happens at usually like a woman involved. It's like women involved at these parties to, to, to really get, get it in. Okay, good. So um, here it is. I'm 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 literally, when I gave my life to the Most High, I did a complete 180. You can ask your mother. Um, I went from listening to the most ignorant hip-hop you could think of to listening to Fred Hammond the very next day, blasting it in my Yukon with 18-inch woofers. My friends still weren't convinced, you know. They were like, okay, yeah. One of my boys would say, yeah, I can't wait for you to get over this dude so we can get back to drinking. That's, that's what one of my boys told me. But anyway, Jay and Elisha, the day before um, the wedding, you have a wedding rehearsal. Right. Just the final one to make sure everything is in order. You know, you're walking this way, whatever. So my friends tricked me. Because after leaving the wedding rehearsal, you go to what's called a wedding, just a dinner, okay? Yeah. Pre, uh, pre-wedding pre dinner. On the way to my house down 8 Mile, my boy's driving my truck with me in the passenger seat, which I realized now that was strategic. And they pulled over and went to the strip club. And I knew I shouldn't have went in there. But I went in, Jay, because like you, I didn't want to, you know, not only offend my friends, but just seem like, you know, I was too... Uh, spiritual or holy, okay? Um, But the scripture says, be holy for I am holy. That's what the Most High says. So I go in the strip club. So they paying for me, have all these lap dances. And women are like literally dancing in front of me, beautiful. And I'm unfazed. I'm like sitting. And I'm just so convicted like, damn, how did I get here? You know, already, you know? And I said, you know what? I told my boys, hey, y'all can stay in here. I'm going to wait for you outside. So I left. I went outside and waited. And then they eventually come out because it ain't no fun if the groom ain't there, you know? Do you know we were late? We missed the wedding. I mean, the wedding dinner, the pre-dinner. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I I missed that. So here it is, my wife thinking she's marrying this transformed guy. So she's on the front porch and she's leaving out and it's dusk outside, almost dark. And she says, I didn't know I was marrying a hypocrite. That sounds she was saying. Yeah. That messed me up. Yeah. I went back in the house and my boys were in the kitchen. I, I called them all in, my mother washing dishes. And I just yelled. I said, I'm not the same guy no more. They were like, what you mean, Jay? We were just trying to get you, you know, that you have fun. I said, no, listen, listen. 
I'm no longer that guy. I say, and I need you guys to respect that. And because we got love for each other, they, they did. But it took that moment for me to stand up like it was time for everyone to know that, yeah, I make mistakes, but I'm no longer living a life making mistakes purposefully yeah. or living a willing a life where I willingly sin like and I'm a slave to it. Now, to your to, to the point of you guys being that type of young men where you are right now in your lives, because I stood up, Jay and Elisha, and told my friends, hey, I'm no longer that guy. My best friend who's no longer with us, Big D or Daryl, good looking guy, very promiscuous. When he gave his life to, to Yah, surrendered it to Christ, he changed. Because I was bold enough to not only say it, but I modeled it. And I changed the culture that was around me. So when you're in your schools, you don't have to worry about changing the entire school. You change the culture that's around you. So if you do that and he do that and then the other boys in the cave do that and other men do that, eventually you can change the entire culture. So that's what I'm hoping you guys would do is just, again, you have to model sexual self-control. And it's more than us controlling our sexual urges, not having sex before marriage, etc. It's about modeling it. Like Chris, uh, Sharaf, Chris Norris. When he goes to the gym, he takes his glasses off so that he would not be tempted to look at the physiques of women walking around. He's serious about maintaining his sexual self-control because he was a slave at one point in his life to sexual sin. So that's what it means to model it, to practice it so it becomes a part of who you are. Just like you practice shooting the basketball or martial arts. We do it over and over and over again so it becomes what? Second nature. Yes. Comes second nature. Same thing with sexual self-control. You practice it daily, daily, keep going, keep going. You fall, get back up. You fall, get back up. Pretty soon you stop falling as much. Pretty soon you stop falling to certain sins, certain struggles. Because what? You're practicing it. All right? Yes. And so, um, you know, I, I guess we can close on that is, um, you know, the best way to do it is practice it. And I, and this is a short story I can tell to close, which is good. Thank you, uh, Most High. Um, I used to... I wouldn't say bodybuild, but I was into looking really good into the, at the gym. Right. And the key to really getting shredded or cut up was having a real clean diet. But I love Lay's potato chips. All right. I love like especially a fresh bag of plain Lay's potato chips. And so I was dieting. Actually, I was uh, getting really defined for that picture we took when you were born, me holding you up to the most high. And I walked past the kitchen cabinets and I saw this bag of Lay's. I'm like, man, one chip won't hurt me. I mean, come on, I mean, I'm already eight packed up. One chip won't hurt me. And I heard the Holy Spirit say so clear. He says, if you can't deny those Lay's, how are you going to deny those legs? Mm. Eventually, because if you eat Lay's, that one chip turns into two, two chips and three, three chips. The whole bag. Then the whole bag. That one long stare at those legs turns into, hey, how you doing? Turns into longer talks. Turns into, hey, I'm going to lunch. Turns into, meet me at your house. Yeah. You got it? Yes, sir. And so, as men, we have to do a better job at practicing sexual self-control. And then we go a little deeper. We have to desire it. All right? Um, again, thank you to all who are watching and those who are listening and we'll be back, um, uh, more, we'll be having more, uh, I guess, consistent episodes soon. Um, again, thank you to all of you who donate. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. Um, 
And uh, again, um, thank you too for uh, doing your best to be transparent. Uh, I know it's a difficult conversation for you two being young, especially being seen possibly by a lot of your peers talking about a subject that most boys um, run away from. Run away from. You got it? Yes, sir. Or crack jokes to try to make you look bad because they may not have the courage to really face themselves. All right. So I give you guys a lot of props. All right. Again, we're gone. Thank you, everybody who's watching. Thank you to everybody who's listening. Uh, shalom alaikum. Alaikum shalom. shalom.